All right, guys, let's do this. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio countdown. Conan Gray. JoJo. It's good to see you, man. Nice to see you again. When are we, okay, this is a question. I'm going to th- throw it at you here. When are we going to do coffee, like lunch, someday? <sighs> Look, once you get me out of this dang office, I'm always in this dang room. <laughs> we need to meet somewhere like, uh, out this. yeah, these these, <laughs> these four walls. Are these much, walls. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Where, where do we do coffee at? You have a favorite, like you live, you Maybe? live in New York, right? No, I live here in L.A. again. Okay, so... Oh my God! How long I know. Have you been back? I got sick of New York. I couldn't do New York. <laughs> I couldn't do New York. I literally lasted like five months, and I was like, "Get me out of here." Okay, we have to discuss it. I've never. Li- I've only been to New York, you know, a handful of times, but I've never lived. Is it just a? It's it's a lot, right? It's a lot. It's incredibly fun. It's incredibly stimulating. But I couldn't handle how fun and stimulating it was. I need boring, and LA is boring. Huh. People, the people that don't know, the people that outside of LA think it's all like ah. It's it's just normal. So boring. You sit in your house and you drive. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we're getting to all this. Conan, uh, this uh, new album coming out on April fifth called Found Heaven. This seems to me like more than just another album. It, it's another cycle. Just at work. This seems like a new. Hate to use the word era because that a new f- chapter for you. Yeah. I, am I reading that? Right. Yeah, it's it's a completely different album than my other two albums. With this album, it was kind of like, okay, what? Uh, I'm on my third album. Like, what do I do? No one tells you. There's no blueprint. So I was like, That's I'm true, just right? gonna do, <laughs> like, whatever. I'm just gonna try something. And my my main goal with everything was just to surprise people. So I hope it'll be a surprise. The last time you came here, uh, you, we I said, hey, I said, Conan, get what. What's what's up? Because you came in with the track, you know. I'm like, what's up? Give me something. You're like, Jojo, I'm allowed. I, re- I recall the quote. I thought it was so fun. I'm allowed to have secrets, mm-hmm. and you kept it. I didn't. The way you said, it, I thought, well, maybe nothing's really going on. Maybe. Just, <laughs> and sure enough, we got off the air, and you play me some snippets of this upcoming. What I think is on the upcoming album, mm-hmm. and uh, it it just blew me away. This album, Found Heaven, coming out April 5th. We're getting close. Mm. What can you say without, of course, you know, saying too much? What what can you, this album? Like you, like you mentioned, a new chapter for you. What can we leak? I think uh, you can expect it to be an album about crushes with like a little tinge of the deepest, darkest heartbreak you've ever <laughs> experienced in your life. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Conan album without like some some pain in there, You need there, right? a little bit of, like, massive depression. <laughs> Just a little, because that's life. I like uh, some happiness with a dash of, oh, my God. Exactly. Hey, um, hey what... Uh, if you can say this, yeah, go for it. If not, it's okay. But is there a song that almost didn't make the album? And the reason I ask these questions is because for some reason that those songs, you know, more times than not, the one that almost didn't make it is the one that becomes this crazy, you know, success. Well, Ali Rose was the last song that I wrote for the album, and I wrote it much later than the rest of the album. I By the time I wrote it, there was barely even any time to put it on the album, so I was like, I gotta get to work. I gotta get to work. So I called Greg Christian. I was like, Greg, like we need to finish this song. We need to make this song. He was like, okay. And so it barely made it on, but it's my favorite song on the whole album. And um, I, it's always that last song on an album that ends up being my favorite and ends up being like, I just feel like the best. Why is that? I think it's I think it's because of perspective. You need some distance from something to really know what happened. And also, you know, I think it's also you write and write, write until you feel like you did good enough. And Ali Rose was like, I did good enough. Conan, true or false? I think this is true. Uh, you announced your album by hanging posters basically around the world. And on each poster, there was a uh, like uh, a clue to what the title was, right? Mm-hmm. Walk me through that. Well, I mean, I feel like there's so much on the internet these days that there, if there's anything that I can do like in the physical world, I want to do it. Ooh. And so I wanted to announce the album title by putting letters all across the world. So it was like one in Mexico City, <laughs> there was one in Tokyo, there was one in London. There was like all these different c- cities where I put one letter of the album and then I made all the fans work together. I like a game. Like life is boring. Let's have some fun and with your, that. Your fans are, you know, uh, I mean this in the best way, po- uh, obsessed with you and everything you do. Yeah, there's something really wrong with them. <laughs> they got some issues, clearly. You know? uh, I mean that with love. Don't hate me. Uh, but um, did did anybody? I mean, they clearly they figured it out. But what? Yeah, how do they figure it out? Who who uh, figured it out? Some of the guesses were really interesting. Um, but they figured it out pretty fast. I mean, I think they figured it out in like an hour. Um, it was pretty quick. That's insane. I mean, to, I mean, I'm sure your clues to, for for you to do something like for you to do something like that, 
and make it really tough, you would have to be so like it would have to be the you know James <laughs> Bond cryptic. You know? Yeah, it, well, yeah. And for those of you who figured it out, good for you, man. Found Heaven, uh, his album coming out on April fifth. Um, I assume no collabs on the album, Conan, because I read that you said collabs are not really your vibe. So I'm going to guess based by that comment, uh, based on that comment, that no collabs. No collabs, not yet, at least. I think I'll know when is the right time to do a bunch of collabs, but it doesn't feel like yet. And I also just, I don't know, this album is very much like a little world, and it felt weird to pull anyone else into that world because like it's its own little weird world. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, is that? I think the the, uh, the 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 statement in its entirety was you don't. A collabs aren't your aren't your vibe. You focus on friendships mm. versus musical collab. Oh, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but basically, why, why aren't collabs your vibe? And I, but I really love that though because it's your album. I don't think I could ever make music with someone unless I'm like really, 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 really close with them. And then I also just feel like, yeah, anything that that doesn't feel genuine just doesn't like anything that's not natural probably won't make a, a good song. So it just takes. I think it's gonna. It takes time for me to like get to get comfortable with people. And when I was working on this album and working with these new producers and things, like it took months for me to ever feel like I was even like comfortable enough to open up to them. So it's a uh, yeah. It's a it's a. Uh, I'm a weirdo like that. You're yeah, a weirdo. You are a weirdo in the best way possible. Thank you. By the way, the obvious question, you and Olivia are tight, and I want to keep this focused on you, but, you know, she's a musician. You guys are real close. Somebody's going to ask you that question. Why not? Have you guys chatted about doing something together, or is it the same thing? You don't want to bring her into that little crazy world. I mean, it's definitely a bit of that, but also Liv and I, like, we're just friends. You know? <laughs> like, there's nothing. I think we've tr we've tried, but if you never write a good song, you shouldn't put it out. <laughs> All the songs so sorry to disappoint. No, no, no good songs coming from Conan and Liv. You guys, you guys uh, great friends write bad songs together. Yeah, it's Absolutely. Perfect. It's like when you're best friends with someone, you never take a picture with them. <laughs> Fair enough. World tour. You got, I saw some dates and everything. Conan, this is, I mean, it's exciting. It's a bit, if I'm looking at it, it's a bit overwhelming because you're traveling everywhere. I mean, what, what do you do to prep for a world tour? And when I mean, like, what do you pack aside from clothes? It's just so much. Um, I pack my Nintendo Switch, um, and I pack, uh, I don't know, I, I don't, it's kind of not that hard to pack for a tour. I feel like I'm traveling pretty nonstop anyways, and the tour is like kind of the best part of the year, so I'm really excited to go on it, and, um, I just need me and my Fortnite, and that's it, and I'm good. How excited are you for this world tour? I'm very excited. I mean, uh, it's been a dream come true for a long time for me to be able to tour like this and um i've also just been bored being home is so boring why do i ever do that oh so you enjoy uh i mean i guess safe to say based on th those, those answers you enjoy road life yeah i like the regime it's like you you get you wake up every day you're in a new city you like do the same things you eat the same foods like it's very like it's very safe it's like my own little safe bubble and i i love it i love to see people saying i love to make them cry <laughs> you're a creature of habit yeah i Literally. am yeah. i'm the same way dude I, yeah. I, and, and people th some people think that's boring i love the routine of it because it. and things change you know in your routine from time to time but you know I, I like to a b c d make sure i hit my big points and then yeah so you and i are probably more alike than you would care to admit mm -hmm. all right the tour starts in july Australia, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, North America, September. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know as far as the L.A. day, because we're sitting in L.A., you're doing the Forum, yeah. which I think is a massive, you know, I can't get, get get a gauge on all the arenas around the country and around the world because I don't know those as well. But you performing at the Forum, to me, says that, man, that you've leveled up. This thing, it's happening. I mean, it's, I a, it's dream a dream it's, come true for God, sure. It is, right? I mean, the forum is the forum, so I'm pretty excited about that. Who is Ali Rose, <laughs> or is it is it a person? Is it a true story? So, what it what? Hold it. Yeah, me in. Ali Rose is not a person, but I I, I wrote it that way on purpose. So uh, I I was heartbroken, and I was in London, and I wrote this song in London. And when I first wrote the song. I, you know, I was like thinking like, oh, what? I, I was supposed to be in love. I was supposed to be dating this person. All of a sudden it's over. So I was like, oh, where'd you go? Go Abbey Road. Because I was in London. It was originally <laughs> called Abbey Road. But then I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't name this like my favorite song on this album after like the most famous album of all time. <laughs> so I decided to make up a name that kind of sounded like Allie Rose. Also, because I was kind of lazy, I didn't want to like change the rhyme. <laughs> so I was like, okay, Allie Rose. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Thanks.
And uh, it, have, what for people like Beatles fans, have they reached out to you like, dude, that's kind of cool? Or <laughs> I mean, I think which I'm not a big Beatles super fan, you know. And I'll, Respect them clearly. Who are the Beatles? No. <laughs> yeah, Beatles are um, no, I think I think a lot of like the best moments of a song or the best moments in life in general are like compromises or or right. like little things where you had to like change them just like off the cuff. And I love that it sounds like this kind of like random name. Like you, I wanted to be general enough to where like when you hear the song, you think of someone specifically, and you don't have to like think of like specifically some person named Ali Rose. You know. Why do I love that story so much? It's a simple story. I just okay. Ali Rose is out. Uh, let's play it, man. Let's do it. What uh, What else should I should we say about this song, or do I hit the red blinking button and just go for it? Um, all I will say is that this bridge is the love of my life. <laughs> I put my heart and soul into this bridge, so please listen closely. Noticeable. Everybody makes mistakes on stage, Conan Gray. But have you ever made a noticeable on stage mistake? One where the audience went, "Oh my God, that wasn't probably wasn't supposed to happen." I trip a lot. I'm, I trip a lot, like, and I, for some reason, my stylist always has me in like shoes that are like this tall. I trip all the time. I trip leaving stage. I trip on, and so um, that's all recorded. Like it's all over the place. Uh, also, um, one time I was playing my very first show in my hometown ever, and um, I jumped and slammed my head into a speaker. <laughs> there were like all these kids from my high school there, and I was like, and I was like, boo, and I was like, bam. Slammed it. The, the 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 speaker went, and then the, everyone in the crowd was like, "Oh!" And I was like, eh, and just kept singing. It was so yeah. I mean, oh god, those, some embarrassing moments. For sure. When you trip, it, is it become have have fans come to kind of expect that, and then they kind of appreciate the trip and just you know, it's sort of a it's a thing. I know? hope so. I hope so because otherwise it's just humiliating. You need to put on like merch, like embrace the trip. Like yeah, a, or like I need the, to like stop. I need to like start wearing like Crocs on stage or something so I don't fall over so much. <laughs> okay, my my uh this is my 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 input. There has to, okay. There's got to be a t-shirt with you tripping that you've endorsed. Like yeah. the, you know, and I like, need to monetize this. You make money off your trip. Oh my god. Max Martin produced to my understanding uh Found Heaven the album. Mm. We we talked about him before and I I would love to touch on him once again. Why why is he so amazing? Because you raved on him last time. I I'm I'm guessing you're going to rave on him again. What is it about Max Martin? I mean, he's the greatest of all time for, as far as I know, mostly just one reason. Like, he just really, really, really loves making music. Like, there's no other reason. He loves it. He cares so much about every little piece. Nothing is ever lazy. Like, every little melody is like, oh, let's think about that. And I think, I think it's just from, I mean, obviously from genius, but also just pure passion. Like, I've never met someone who loves it more and has been doing it for this many decades and is still just, like, so obsessed with making everything as great as possible. It's so cool. I think you told me last time, I think the phrase you said was, he he, he cares. He cares. And it's a it's a weirdly rare thing. I think, really? um, yes. Whoa, okay. It's a weirdly rare thing. He actually cares. Like, he actually cares about whether something is great or not. Um, I, I, He's, like, uh, just, yeah, the greatest of all time. He cares. Didn't he do the, uh, like, Backstreet Boys, I Want It That yeah, Way? Yeah, he did. Okay, the story, uh, there's a story of uh, I Want It That Way. When you listen to the Backstreet Boys lyrics, they don't, it doesn't make sense <laughs> lyrically. But they did another version of that song where it made more, you know, grammatical sense, I guess, you know. And it just didn't sound right. If you haven't, if you've heard it, you know what I'm talking about. So I guess his genius was realizing it doesn't matter if the, grammatically it's not perfect. He went back, you know, they went back to the original version, and it's it is what it is. It's the famous "I want it that yeah. way." That's I guess I don't know. Something about that story makes me love him more, and I see why you picked him to produce this album. Absolutely. You know, I'm obsessed with my haunted houses and my mm -hmm. ghost. Last time you came here, you told me a story about this. Uh, I believe it was a, a haunted, either a hotel or Airbnb in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And I put that story on my podcast. I titled it Ghost in Footy Pajamas because this, it, and it sounds crazy and almost comedic, but this thing scared the crap out of you. Yeah. Do you mind telling that story again? Unless there's another haunted story that comes to mind. There's no new haunted stories. Thankfully, I've stayed away from the supernatural <laughs> for the past six months. But um, yeah, I was staying in a room in Sweden and I woke up at three in the morning and I just looked at, I was like, there's something in my room right now. I don't know what it is. There's something in my room. And I was looking and I was like, huh. And then I realized that it was a child. There was a child standing in my room about 
three feet in front of me. It looked like it, like it didn't look misty. It looked like a real kid. Clear as day, modern day child, like not like some old Victorian, like modern day child in footy Spider Man pajamas. I remember distinctly, and I was like, "What?" So I sat up. I looked at the kid. The kid looked at me, <laughs> and then the kid took one step forward, and I saw in its hand that it was holding a gun and it pointed a gun at me and then I threw my pillow at it and it disappeared. Looking back, I definitely was just so insanely jet lagged and hallucinating, but it was insane. It was clear as day. Well, hallucinating or you saw something, you know, paranormal. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Look, I mean, I'm delusional, so I'm sure I made it up, but it was also unbelievable because it was to an extent where I was like, how did I even come up with that? How did my brain even think of creating a child in footy pajamas with a gun? That is that is crazy. To think that is so bizarre. And but it also made me realize like our reality is just what we are imagining. Like truly, like we we whatever we are witnessing in our minds is it. That's it for us. Which there's an album, there's a song somewhere in what you just said, or maybe that's part of your album now. Is because there? It, I don't know. Okay, I'm <laughs> I'm going crazy. Hey, uh, uh tour is going to kick off like you said. I think uh, what July or June. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot of hotel, beautiful hotels you're going to stay in. <laughs> Here's my request. Mm-hmm. And you're going to say no, and you probably should say no. But at least one of these, if not more of these hotels, are going to have a story. A mm-hmm. haunted floor. Don't stay oh. in room 314. Seventh floor, this happened. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Would you consider requesting a haunted room in one of them and then reporting back and let me know what, you know, what happened? I will consider it just for you, but I don't want to mess with the ghosts. I don't want they, but they come to me anyway, so it's fine. That's what I'm thinking because you have a. It's uh, I think you have a gift, or maybe you look at it more so as a, a curse, curse, you know. But you know, if if it, you know, if if something happens, we'll punch your phone and okay. you know get that thing on, and then we can go. We'll discuss afterwards. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, you said this statement on some red carpet, and, I, and maybe the internet took it and ran with it the, the wrong way, you know. <laughs> But you said, uh, you know, since there is a, a bit of a, a negotiation ongoing with the record labels mm-hmm. and TikTok, and they've since pulled, you know, tons of artist music off of TikTok, who knows where the negotiations stand? I would imagine it's going to clear itself up at some point. I don't mm-hmm. know. Uh, but you said, because your music is off TikTok, your career is over. Please. <laughs> Tell me what what's going on. Um, I was just joking. <laughs> I was just joking around, but then obviously the internet like never understands sarcasm ever. I need to stop being so sarcastic because it because it's if you watch a video then you like understand, but if you see it written down, it does not look good. <laughs> like sarcasm, I saw it down. I'm exactly. Like, oh my God. <laughs> sarcasm never looks good when it's written down. It just looks like me being a an idiot. Um, I was just joking, but no one understands that, of course. I, I should have known better. Conan, you're not allowed to joke anymore. No more jokes from Conan. No, no more. Not at all. All right. I've been dying to ask you this question. Fate, you're a you're a, a lyricist. Mm. You love to write. What is impossible question to answer? What's your favorite lyric that you've ever written? Either past, present, or future without giving too much away because the album's not officially out yet. Oh God. Um I think that the well, there's so many that have different meanings and that I love so much. But um, from the day that I wrote this song, I Allie Rose talking. No, from the second that I wrote Heather, I oh. knew I felt so relieved and I felt so grateful and glad because I tried to get it off my chest for three years. And I know there's kind of like this thing with like ours where they they don't like their like biggest song. I am not that way. I love Heather with all my heart and soul, and that song means everything to me. And when I wrote that song, it was so like validating and such a relief to see that other people understood me because I felt so alone in that situation. So I love Heather. Also, the bridge of Ali Rose is literally my favorite bridge that I ever wrote in my life. When I was writing it, like my fingers were on fire. Like it was crazy. I was so I was so happy to get that off my chest. So it's those songs where I feel like I've like been trying to say it for so long, but but couldn't. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the that's the nicest feeling in the when world. When you when you write a when you write a lyric that really speaks to you so to speak uh does it feel like it's come i've been told it feels like it's you're writing it but it feels like it's coming from above in a way like it's uh, like spiritually it's somebody's like the he- the heavens are feeding you this line in a yeah way. you don't even think like you're just kind of speaking like it's the craziest thing it's all like all the best songs that come from your subconscious they're like these moments where you don't even realize that you felt that way until you wrote it down i wish everyone could write a song in their life because it's a feeling that's like so so special to me and it like hurts me that people don't 
get to witness like the 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 comfort of writing a song. Oh wow! Now, okay, now I'm digging kind of deep here. When you're writing a song and that's not happening, mm-hmm. that 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 you know direct line to the you know, to the heavens or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That's got to be frustrating that you can't oh. seem to sink into it. I'm guessing. So annoying. It's so annoying. And there can, there's weeks where like I don't write a single song that like feels like that feeling. Um, but I just trust and I keep going. And that's everything in life, you know, like there's ups and downs with everything. So I just trust the process and just keep going. Conan, you've been through this before. It's your third album. Uh, but this is, a, like we said, another chapter. In, this is a big moment here. Um, what's going through your head as this album is about to come out? I'm pissing my pants. <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, uh, I'm scared. I'm nervous for sure. I mean, I don't know what people are gonna think because it is. It's weird. It's a weird album, and um, I went into I went into the album being like, just want to surprise people, and now I'm like, oh god, I'm gonna surprise people. Like oh, it's what? not good. So it's 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 um it's uh, yeah, I'm nervous. There's all people are like, are you excited? I'm like, no, I'm scared. I don't know what people are gonna think, but um, I think it's gonna be interesting and. Uh, I just hope that people, uh, yeah, I hope that what people. What do you think? Are, but you don't know what they're, what, what do you, what's your gut feeling? Are they, some are going to love it. Some are going to be like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, but that's kind of good though, right? I think, yeah, I think some people are going to love it and get it. And the people who get it are going to get it. And then I think there's other, there's going to be people who are be like, what is this? What are you doing? So I think that's like the fun of it all. Is, that's, that's, the, that's the point of being an artist though, right? Yeah. I think that's kind of the point of just being a person. Like you're not going to be great for everyone all the time. You know, you, you have to go through all these different phases and changes and someone who thinks you're perfect. There's also someone else on the other end of the room who's like, I have never met a worse person in my <laughs> life. So, uh, it's, yeah, I don't really mind what people think. Well, that, uh, the, uh, I think they say the quickest way to fail is trying to please everyone. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great way to fail. Absolutely. That's a great quote. Ali Rose, the track it's out, uh, found heaven, the album coming out April 5th. Uh, tour is kicking off soon. I believe you're going to stay in a haunted hotel for me at some point. <laughs> uh, at least that's what I choose to believe. Um, I got to hear one more time. Uh, you moved. You left New York because mm-hmm. it was just too much excitement. Mm-hmm. Now you're back in L.A., which is where I live at, where we are right at the moment, uh, because L.A. is boring. Please explain to people once again why L.A. for some of us is just a good old boring town. The reason why L.A. is perfect <laughs> is because there's nothing to do here. <laughs> nothing. And nobody believes you when you nobody say that. Nobody believes you. There's nothing to do. You can you just get in your car and you sit in your house and you see your two friends and you take Instagram picture. And that's it. <laughs> that's all you do. And so I love it. I love that there's, it's very unstimulating. So you can actually truly rest here, which I really need. And they think it's Hollywood. Is We never go to Hollywood. Hollywood is boring. Hollywood's terrible. What, what's, why would we go to Hollywood? <laughs> why, what, what would we do there? There's nothing in Hollywood. Nothing. You see a guy on the uh, Hollywood, you see a bunch of people dressed like superheroes. Yeah, you can see Elmo, maybe. Elmo is a man in an Elmo suit. But what are we going to do with that? That's so true. And when it's, it's, when it's summertime, it's just too no but we don't no we don't want to go to the beach. It's too no, hot. No, it's too hot. Degrees. Sit in your house. Sit in your house is the main activity of LA. God, we 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 we're speaking the same same language. Conan, what else do people need to know about Conan Gray? Conan Gray? Um, not much. I'm going on tour, so uh, please come see me. But if you don't want to see me, then that's all right too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, my album's coming out, and you can listen to it. But if you don't want to listen to it, I can't stop you. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, that's it. Good to see you, Conan. Nice to see you. At the end of every interview, fist bump to make it official. Give me a little...